Hey Thinksters and welcome to today's Coffee Break Python. So in today's video uh, I, I thought it would be fun to talk about the NumPy FV function. It uh, calculates the future value of an investment in Python using the NumPy library. Okay, so it, the function starts with uh, the import statement. So you first need to import the NumPy library to, you know, to use the function. And yeah, NumPy, NumPy is full of those little helper functions that actually boost your productivity and make coding a lot of fun. But uh, unfortunately, many many coders, many Python coders, don't know this and like calculate, uh, do everything on their own. And as a programmer, uh, to improve your productivity, you should always stand on the shoulders of giants. So you should always use functionality that was already provided by um, some uh, some coders that are better than you that have invested more time into creating these libraries than you ever will. So therefore, so we will we will use this function in the financial sector to calculate the future value of a given investment. And so um, it c basically computes the future value of an asset, assuming that you know the growth rate of the investment or its return of uh, on investment, the size of your regular contributions, and the duration of this investment pe period. Okay. And so in general, the function, uh, like, uh, so you call np.fv, then you can pass the rate, the period. So I will just give the um, arguments and then I ex explain them. So this is like the, uh, the function syntax, okay? And it defines which argument you pa can pass into the function. So for example, you can pass a rate this is your return on investment. So, for example, in the stock market, stocks may have an investment historic return of say nine percent. So you can say put in nine percent here, zero point zero nine as a decimal number. Uh, you can define the number of period periods you want to compound your investment. So, say you calculate your thirty year investment return on the stock market. You can use like the um, the number of periods say thirty. Um, this one is the additional payments you contribute during your investment peri um, period. So if you want to calculate the future value of a one-time investment, you'd use the input argument, say, uh, PMT zero, okay? So you have like a one-time contribution. But, so, but if you want to contribute, say, $1,000 per year, say we are, or say we can contribute $300 per month, we have 12 months, so uh, we have, uh, we can also calculate like this, so we have here the yearly contribution of uh, three hundred dollars, and um, yeah, we add we add uh, three three thousand six hundred dollars per year basically. And you can also add a negative contribution here if you want to calculate. So on, in retirement, basically, how long does our uh, investments suffice until until? So this you can also have negative contributions, obviously. Um, good. And this PV value is the present value of your investment. So this is the starting point that you will get compounded over the number of periods. So if you start with $1,000 as an inve initial investment, you'd use uh, the input argument minus 1,000, for example. Um, if you have, uh, um, yeah, so you can, you, can any, you can put in any numbers. And the, and the final uh, period when it represents when the payment is due. And at the beginning or the end of the period, so basically, this is just, I mean, you, in most cases, you would just use when is end. This is also, this argument is optional, so you can simply skip it. It doesn't really matter, it just, just defines the period. So, uh, when does it, does it, does it, do you contribute at the beginning of a period or at the end of the period? So, this is just, just, like just a uh, small thing. Okay, so say you have an initial investment of $1,000, you have negative 1000 therefore, as the initial uh, investment and you have uh, $3,600 you contribute yearly over 30 years, assuming a stock market return of uh, 9%. And let's print this to the share. Oh, and now if we run this, what is our final output? So our final output, so just ignore the negative here. It's just a mathematical um, glitch kind of thing. Um, so your final sum would be $477,000. So if you contribute only $300 per month over a period of uh, 30 years and you compound it at 9% uh, per year, which is the historical return of the, of the stock market, you get $477,000 out there. And you can like play with this number and 
So you may ask, okay, what is the equivalent? Equivalent would be the following. So we have an initial contribution of $1,000. This is just you start with $1,000, right? Um, so if you start with more, say 30,000 or 40,000, then of course it would be much, much higher. Um, you have, um, you, you then basically add your return rate like this over a period of 30. So this formula basically calculates what you would calculate in the uh, NumPy future value formula. But uh, so it should uh, basically, now I have used different, yeah, I have used different uh, numbers here, I guess. 36 ah, okay so we don't have any contributions here so this one would be the final sum without contributions this one would be the sum with with contributions okay and uh, yeah it's just a just a um, very nice way to to calculate your future value of investments and now maybe you maybe you want to also see the intermediate state so say you want to see the whole picture the big picture and now you can use a simple plotting mechanism so you have now we create a list of elements. We use list comprehension. So for, for each value i, for each integer value i, in the range uh, from 0 to 29 inclusive. So we have like year 0, year 1, year 2, year 3, until we reach year 29. So we have 30 years in total. And um, now we use this value i as the number of years that, it, that the money has compounded. We use this uh, like 9% investment and say contribution of... Um, yeah, I mean here we can have any contribution. Say what? What should we add as contribution? Say three thousand six hundred dollars, and um, yeah, over a period of thirty years, and then we plot the investment value after a certain years. And you can also save the figure here. We just skip it. We just want to show it. And if you run the code, okay, oh, shouldn't have added this contribution, I think. So let's. Okay, so now this looks uh, nicer. I, I shrink this graphic a bit. Okay, so this is now, yeah, without contribution, you see uh, on the uh, y -axis, x axis, you see the number of years that have passed, and on the uh, y axis, you see the uh, your investment return over time. And you can, like, in, with matplotlib, the library, you can simply plot your future value of an investment uh, using this numpy fv function for each of the. Uh, subsequent periods yeah by using this simple fault loop okay so this is a numpy fv function i will give a link in the description below to a blog article to more information and then you can just play around with the numbers and and uh, as a call to action just check out your investment strategy today uh commit to your investment strategy check out the historical returns of your put of your asset allocation and yeah make make sure that you have enough uh, money in retirement okay see you in the next video and bye